Hey, what's up everyone? It's your old pal, the K-Man 1971, back with my latest edition of my comic book collection spotlight series featuring the double-sized finale of What's in the Spec Box, the good, the bad, and the funny. So, um, just to recap real quick, why do I spec personally? Man, it's fun. Why not? <laughs> it's just another aspect of the hobby. Uh, I've always liked to collect first appearances, especially on the cheap, especially when I was young and I didn't have any money. Um, killer covers, extras to flip later on down the road for a profit, um, trendy books that weren't really worth anything and you can get them on the cheap, uh, movies and streaming, definitely an influence, um, spec quote unquote news, of course, that flows on the tubes, IG, spec sites, whatnot, and also just a nice little way to grow value in your collection when done correctly uh, on the cheap. You know, you buy a book in a dollar bin and who knows, could be worth 20, 30, could be worth 50 cents, but when done correctly, it's a nice little way to grow value in your collection on the cheap. At least what it has been for me, fortunately. So um, let's get it on. I have a lot of books to show, so um, covering a lot of topics of Ghosts of Spec Pass. So kicking it off, we have Sandman, the Orpheus special from back in the 90s. Um, I was a real big fan of the Sandman series, as well as the Netflix series adapting this material. I've never finished the entire run, though. So um, I wanted to pick this book up because this character was hinted about in um, in season one. So I always try to uh, seek out those issues for characters that might potentially pop later on down the road. So really good book, really good series, both um, both in print and on the small screen. Here we have my second copy of Death, The High Cost of Living, and this is the first time that Death headlined her own series, so we all know how it goes. If the first appearance is too expensive or out of reach, people always tend to uh, gravitate towards that first issue where a character headlines their own series. Swamp Thing number 67, second copy yet again, and uh, this features a preview of Hellblazer number one. John, uh... Well, Keanu Reeves might be reprising his role. Who knows after, you know, James Gunn and everything that went down. But um, this book kind of spiked a little bit. I haven't checked any of the values on these, so bear with me. Another example of a first appearance on the cheap. Uh, Mephista from Doctor Strange, number six. And I don't even remember why this character spiked. I guess anything that's seven degrees of Mephi Mephisto. Uh, has potential in the Marvel Universe, at least in the spec market. War Machine, number one. First time that War Machine headlines his own title. And uh, I'm glad that the Armor Wars has been bumped up to a, a movie because that's going to require a lot of CGI. Good CGI. So, uh, X-Force, number 21. And this might be the first time that Rhodey was referred to as War Machine. I believe it was G-Dub Comics, couple of years ago showed this in one of his halls and um kind of put it on my radar so we as we all know west coast avengers gets a credit for the first time that roadie was referred to as war machine but if you look up on midtown comics this this comic was actually published prior to that one so who knows and you know big no big deal we're just debating on <laughs> which issue contains the first time that roadie was actually referred to as war machine but cool to pick up on the cheap if it's out there speaking of roadie Iron Man number 284, the first time that Rhodey actually donned the War Machine armor, and uh, I, obviously that's pretty significant. Injustice number three, first appearance of uh, Nissa Ghoul, just a character from an alternate dimension. Fantastic, fo well, rather, FF, the Fut Future Foundation, number 19, and this features a character, oh, I can't remember her name, but... She, she might or might not have appeared in Wakanda Forever or is rumored to appear on the alleged Wakanda spinoff series that might or might not still be in the works for Disney+. Plus. Blue Beetle, number one. First time that uh, Jaime Reyes headlined his own book. And uh, I'll always be a Ted Cord guy, but I will definitely check out this Blue Beetle movie once it comes out on... Um, Max, formerly known, well, which will formally be known as HBO Max by that time. So, uh, yeah, well, whatever. Just seems a little bit too young for me. A little bit too zillennial, I guess. Which, nothing wrong with that, but when you're an old Xer like me, it doesn't really jive that much. Uh, Blue Beetle, number 14, and number 15. And this might or might not feature one of the antagonists that will be in the upcoming movie. Not sure. 
Madame Xanadu, number one. I believe that's the A cover, and this is the B cover. Once again, Justice League Dark was canceled after the, the James Gunn effect went into effect for the new DCU, but I still think that um, DC will definitely utilize the Justice League Dark characters. Probably not under the Justice League Dark banner, though. At least I'm hoping not, anyway. Some cover grabs. Deceased, Dead Planet, number six. Excellent Mary Marvel cover and an excellent homage all in one. Speaking of which, I just can't seem to get sick of this homage either. Spawn number 327 featuring The Haunt. And just a cool Women, women of Power, Marvel Women of Power cover featuring, featuring Titania, She-Hulk, Valkyrie, and Sue Storm. Just a nice cover grab right there. I wish I would have uh, enjoyed the series a bit more on Disney+, Plus, or rather a lot more. Let's make some room. Silver Surfer, number 53. This book just kind of spiked a little bit over the past couple of weeks. This will feature a character that will be featured in the upcoming Marvels movie, but has been gender swapped, and most likely after the movie, no one will really care about this book any longer. Fantastic Four, number 358, featuring that cyborg scroll that might or might not be appearing in Secret Invasion. Ah, here's some of my favorite spec, Star Wars. <laughs> Shocker to all, I'm sure. So here we have Star Wars Episode One. This is a second copy also featuring the first time that Obi-Wan Kenobi headlined his own title. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. I have a bunch of copies of these, and this just has a bunch of first appearances uh, that did not make their first appearance in the Wizard Half issue. <laughs> I'm sorry. So uh, when why not, right? So here's number one. Number two, picked up for the same reasons. And... Here we have Star Wars, The High Republic, number seven. And uh, I was really big on this series. Uh, an all-new, brand-new, fresh era of Star Wars that hasn't been explored yet. And uh, this issue happens to feature the first appearance of Darth Krall, who's the first new Sith Lord that's been introduced in Marvel Comics, as far as I know, since uh, they ended up getting the rights to Star Wars, you know, uh, several years ago. So, um... I've been enjoying The High Republic, too. I enjoyed Phase 1 a lot more than Phase 2, and so I'm really looking forward to picking back up with these characters in a couple of months. So here's number 7, another copy of number 7, and I also picked up two copies of the Keev Trennis action figure variant. I'm really big on this character. She didn't make her first appearance in, in this issue, obviously. It was uh, issue number 1, but um, yeah, I think big things to come for that character without getting into it and spoiling. Uh, here we have Star Wars number 10, another big High Republic character, I believe. First appearance of Lorna D. Picked up two copies of that. Well, actually three. These are my doubles. Um, Star Wars Bounty Hunters number 26. This was um, actually the last issue. I actually had this on my pull list, and it just happened to feature this cover. So uh, first cover appearance of Reva. And I'll actually be... I don't know, flirting with the idea of putting this back on my pull list, seeing that they'll be having an, an upcoming arc featuring Boba Fett starting with issue number 35. Amazing Spider-Man number 93, first appearance of Ben Riley as Chasm. Spider-Girl number 59, which I believe features the son of Peter Parker in, from an alternate universe. Ben, ben Parker, per perhaps? Hercules, Prince of Power, number one. Second copy of this, of course. This is an 80s classic, and this book slightly spiked after Thor Ragnarok. Speaking of which, Mighty Thor, number 378, featuring the first uh, appearance of Thor's armored look, I guess, that was featured in uh, Thor Ragnarok. That movie was a disappointment. I'm sorry. But um, regardless of that, this book it will always be a keeper because I'm always trying to plug away at that Walt Simonson run from the 80s. Some potential Phase 5 Secret Wars-esque spec. Um, Thor, number 384, uh, 384, featuring this future Thor, as well as 440, featuring the Thor Core. All right. Last batch of books. Superior Iron Man, number one, which features, I think, the first AI Tony Stark's armor. Um, I'm not sure. Also features the first appearance of, oh, what's his name? Kid Abomination? Not that that matters that much. 
Fantastic Four, 570, featuring the Council of Reeds. So, um, I wouldn't rule that out, especially with, um, you know, all the Marvel Secret Wars stuff that will be going down over the next several years. Can't have a Council of Kangs without a Council of Reeds, right? Excalibur number 101, and this features that department, what is it, M18, I believe, the first mention of that. And... Th like these, this and the next several books are all based on uh, like that extra scene from the Eternals, a movie I didn't even really care for. But uh, I was trying to hunt down the first time that uh, that Blade ended up meeting um, the Black Knight. I'm not sure I ended up uh, succeeding either. So here's uh, what number is this? Here's number five, number six. Oops, out of order. Number four and number eight, which Blade and the Black Knight definitely appear in panel together on there, but I'm not sure if that's even significant. But the series was actually really good, though. So I'm, uh, we're going to end it off as I tend to do with uh, some cheap first appearances. So Doom uh, 2099, number one. 2099 Unlimited number one, featuring the, the first appearance of Hulk 2099. Manhunter number one. Who knows? I thought this character was pretty cool, too. Uh, first appearance of Cybok, I believe, or Cybok, the, the, the antagonist from the, <laughs> the ill-fated ill Black Adam movie. Gotham Academy, number one, just, you know, cheap, cheap, abstract, well, obscure, rather, um, Batman family characters. I'm not even sure if these characters are even relevant any longer. Batman Arkham Knight, first appearance of the old school original Arkham Knight from the video games. DC really dropped the ball with their uh, incontinuity version of that character. But people love Batman, people love video game adaptations, so... Why, why the heck not? This is, this is a book that definitely uh, has fallen far from its peak from a couple of years ago. Here's an old school classic, Batman, the official movie adaptation from uh, the featuring the first appearance of the Mike, Michael Keaton Batman. And then lastly, Justice League of America number 140 and 141 featuring the first appearance of the Manhunters who may or may not be appearing in the upcoming Green Lantern series on uh, on Max. So uh, that's it. That will wrap it up. Quite a few books. Aside from, I don't know if I mentioned it in the beginning, but uh, all of the books I, I featured here are between the, the $1 and $5 range with the, with the exception of um, Sandman, the, the Orpheus special, which I think was like eight or nine bucks. So speculation can definitely be fun, especially when you do it within, you know, on the cheap, in my opinion, anyway. So, um, and just as long as you're speculating on something that you like, I guess, um, you can't really go wrong. Uh, don't let too many out, I, I guess, as an old school collector, don't let too many outside influencers influence you, I guess. I mean, I come from the generation where back in the day, I, the, the Wizard Top 10 really influenced my purchases. And some of those, uh, you know, some of those books on the Top 10 were legitimate and others were just, you know, plain old bullshit. So right now, what do we have? We have basically the Comic Tom slash Key Collector Top 10. We have the CBSI Top 10. We have the Cover Price Top 10 that are, that, that are all like kind of influencing the market. But they're all based on eBay sales, correct? But yet, if you look at all of those top 10s that come out on a weekly basis, none of those top 10s are really identical at all. So is it really accuracy that's the, the primary objective of those top 10s? Or is it, you know, promoting one's own brand? So that that's up for you all to decide. So until next time, I will be back with a comic book call next month. Until next time, take care. Thank you for watching. Go Celtics, please! <laughs>